Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Rachel Ziegler ruining the Hunger Games franchise after already destroying Snow White for Disney. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. The Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes came in at $44 million domestically in its opening weekend. That's actually lower than the Marvels. The franchise in the past has done much higher numbers. The Hunger Games Catching Fire did $158 million. The Hunger Games did $152 million, very close to the first movie. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 did $121 million. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 did $102 million. Now, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is coming in at $44 million. This is not a financial disaster for the studio because they controlled their budget. The Marvels had a budget of anywhere from $250 to $350 million, including promotion. This Hunger Games movie had a budget of $100 million plus promotion. It's not going to destroy the studio, but it may destroy the franchise. Coming from Deadline, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is coming in at the bottom of where we were seeing it yesterday with a $44 million opening. The hope was that this Suzanne Collins prequel was bound to file at least $50 million plus. Overseas was better at $54.5 million for a $98.5 million global opening. There is strong word of mouth for the movie among the under 25 female crowd, which could help the pick during the Thanksgiving stretch. However, this film was front loaded a la any young adult movie aimed at women. Meaning to say, the women that wanted to see it have probably already seen it. That said, two types of movies work over Thanksgiving, Family and PG-13 aimed at a fervent demo. Songbirds and Snakes falls into the latter category. After the Marvels posted a franchise low for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is Songbirds and Snakes also a misfire? It definitely is a misfire. It's a franchise low. It means they don't know if they can do more Hunger Games movies or not. Deadline says not necessarily and at a $100 million production cost, 65% of which is funded by foreign sales with another $20 million in German tax credits, the Lionsgate Francis Lawrence directed movie is structured completely differently financially from the $200 million to $350 million movie The Marvels. This is to say that they sold the rights internationally for 65% of the production cost. Studios will do that to reduce the risk of producing a movie. It means they can cover a lot of their costs that way. So the studio is not going to get killed. It's just completely unclear whether or not the Hunger Games franchise has any kind of future. It should have a future. Look at these international box offices. This is from The Hunger Games Catching Fire, $865 million worldwide. The Hunger Games, $694 million worldwide. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, $755 million worldwide. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, $653 million worldwide. Not quite as much, but still fantastic numbers, really, for almost any franchise. Lionsgate has largely covered their costs and exposure in foreign territory licensing, materially participating after their partners recover their costs. So they will get additional money from the foreign sales if the foreign sales go beyond a certain amount of box office. This is a good deal for Lionsgate. It helps them really control their costs and make profit if the movie actually does well. But it is doing a lot less business than the prior Hunger Games movies. Songbirds and Snakes will be profitable with a domestic end result between $120 and $130 million projected. Still, there didn't seem to be any kind of urgency here on behalf of fans to reignite new life into Hunger Games. The challenge here for Lionsgate in launching this movie all along, aside from the actor strike, is the fact that the Collins novel wasn't a big hit like the others hitting shelves during COVID with 3.5 million novels sold. 
The other factor that can't be ignored is that Hunger Games diehards were upset when the studio split up Mockingjay into two movies. Lawrence heard the outcry and has his regrets. While Lionsgate did have a sag after interim agreement rather late in the campaign and the strike did end, giving them close to two weeks to trot their cast out between London, Berlin, and Hollywood, there's no question that the actor walkout since July hurt the major beats of Songbirds and Snakes marketing campaign. Like the Marvels, this is a movie that could have had a major blast off at San Diego Comic-Con without a strike. But I will say that the Marvels never had a chance at San Diego Comic-Con. It is not a movie made for comic book fans. It is a movie made for diversity-obsessed communist lunatics. The bigger question going forward is whether or not this is enough to keep the franchise going. By major studio standards, it is not. It's going to be more expensive to mount a sequel. When Fantastic Beasts came out and opened to $74.4 million domestically, we slammed it saying that it wasn't enough to fire off a five-film franchise. That was correct on a box office basis, and the Harry Potter spinoff only made it to three films versus the planned five films, with grosses plummeting with each installment. However, the way studios look at these movies, even with the declining grosses, is that they are a catalyst to other parts of the business, such as theme parks, merchandise, and the overall home sales of older movies in the franchise. Whenever you put out something new, you're always able to sell back library, back catalog of prior movie projects. At the same time, Fantastic Beasts opened to a new box office benchmark for prequel movies, meaning openings under the $80 million threshold, and what their potential could be when such titles veered from the core franchise. The first Fantastic Beasts opening stateside was 56% off from the opening of the final Harry Potter, Deathly Hallows Part 2's $169 million. Songbirds and Snakes start is down 57% from the last Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2's $102 million opening. Quote, this is to be expected is what several distributor sources are telling the author about the results here. Many sensitive to the fact that Songbirds and Snakes campaign was off kilter because of actors forbidden to promote. All of this said by film foreign sales funding standards, the opening here for the Hunger Games prequel is okay. Quote, if each major foreign partner fares well in their territories with the movie, they'll definitely buy into another Hunger Games installment, no question about it, says one foreign sales big macha. Big macha means big shot. Quote, this isn't so much about expanding the franchise as rebuilding it, says the same source about Songbirds and Snakes, which arrived in theaters eight years after Mockingjay 2. The distance between Deathly Hollows 2 and Fantastic Beasts was only five years. However, Something seems off here in getting a vibrant word of mouth out to fans despite the strike. True, Spotify was a big partner in the premiere and strutting the music. But the author does not think moviegoers were aware of the sublime country song ballads and how different this movie is from the bows and arrow action of the core franchise. Another obstacle was the fact that this was a movie as a dark character-driven origin tale. Coming from Bounding into Comics, Rachel Ziegler's The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes receives the worst critics scores of the entire franchise. When you're getting the worst critics scores, you're going to hurt the movie. I can't blame Rachel Ziegler for this. It's not like she wrote the script. At the same time, you have to make sure the content is good when you're working on a project. Let's take a look at some of these scores. Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes a 60% tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes. The Hunger Games did 84% on their tomato meter. The Hunger Games Catching Fire had 90%. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, 70%. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, also 70%. 60% means you can't even impress the critics. Additionally, coming from Collider, Rachel Ziegler still won't shut up about her Snow White role. Nobody thinks of Snow White as a leader. Snow White should not be a leader. However, 
Rachel Ziegler says her Snow White will be a leader. The live action film, which also stars Gal Gadot, will premiere in 2025. Coming from Screen Rant, live action Snow White star teases key change for iconic Disney character, quote, leader within her. Rachel Ziegler, who plays the title character in the upcoming live action remake Snow White, explains how the character will embrace a leader role. The character does it's not Snow White anymore when you turn the character into some kind of leader. That is not what the story was supposed to be about. Rachel Ziegler is a 22-year-old actress. I have no problem with her personally, but it seems like she keeps going from project to project and destroying brands and franchises. Studios these days seem to be giving way too much freedom in exchange for trying to promote diversity in their projects. Perhaps with the right guidance and the right structure, Rachel Ziegler could have produced an excellent Hunger Games movie. Maybe she could have even produced a good Snow White movie. That's possible. But the Hunger Games franchise, which really was a multi-billion dollar franchise doing very well internationally, is now at risk. The problem with putting a multi-billion dollar franchise at risk is it's incredibly difficult to develop a franchise in the first place. We saw this happen with Star Wars. We saw this happen with Marvel. These branded studio franchises are worth multiple billions of dollars. And as we said about Hunger Games before, every time you put out something new, it helps sell all of your back catalog. So it's important to not burn the franchise, ruin it, and destroy the value of everything else that came before just as a straightforward business proposition. From a fan standpoint, you must focus on satisfying the fans. If you don't satisfy the fans, there is no brand. There is no franchise. There is no future for the Hunger Games or for Snow White or for Marvel or for Star Wars if you won't give people what they expect when they buy into your brand. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.